So in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about applying a little bit more of a jazz approach to either your pop or rock playing. This is something that I, I always get comments on whenever I play in a pop or rock context. People always talk about, you know, uh, that jazz thing or whatever in my playing. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about how you can achieve kind of applying some basic jazz principles to music that isn't specifically jazz. And so the big thing that I think people are commenting on when they hear this is that it's a lot more specific of an approach. And what I mean by that, say for example, I'm playing over a chord progression that goes C to F to G. Over that, when I'm soloing, while a pop or rock guitarist might think I'm in C major, because that whole chord progression is in C major, they'll play over the whole the whole thing is if they're in C major, whereas if I were a jazz guitarist approaching that same progression, I would be playing a lot more C kind of arpeggio based ideas, maybe C major 7, C major 6, maybe a little F major 7, because that would be my 4 chord, throw in a 9 there, and then over the G, I'm specifically going to be playing arpeggios and notes of G dominant 7. So G. Those kinds of sounds. And so, just to give you kind of an example before I break into how you can actually start achieving this, let me just try to give you a real demonstration. So I have this loop ready to go, and what, what's happening on this loop is it's two bars of C, and I'm just playing this cowboy C, and then there's one bar of F to one bar, bar of G. And I'll play over it once with maybe something that uh, a rock or pop player might play. So I'm going to stick mostly to C major pentatonic, and I'm just going to play over the whole, the whole thing with mostly pentatonic notes. So you can hear what that sounds like. So that was me playing over two bars of C and two bar or one bar of F and one bar of G, just in kind of a, a general safe kind of pentatonic, where again I'm just thinking C major pentatonic over that. Now, here's me playing with a little bit more jazz of an approach, where I'm going to specifically be playing things like C major six or C major seven over C, F major six or F major seven over F, and then G dominant 7 over the G. So here's me playing with a little bit more jazzy of an approach. Where again, I did definitely still mix that with some scales. So over C major 7, I was thinking C Lydia, or sorry, C Ionian, just a normal C major scale. Over F, I was thinking maybe a Lydian mix with my F major 7 arpeggio. And then over G, or I was thinking specifically G7 or G mix a Lydian. And now, the best way to kind of practice doing stuff like this, I find, is to in a position, so I was staying mostly between let's say my 10th fret and my 5th fret, is work out some of your arpeggios in that territory. So a great way to do this is to just take it and fill every single 8th note with your arpeggios. So I'm going to take, for example, let's do, well let's start with a C major triad and then I'll build it up into a major seven. So if I were to just play two bars of C major, I would think, again, and I wanna fill every eighth note, so one and two and three and four and, and then do that again for the second bar. That might sound something like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So that shapes up there. If you aren't comfortable with your arpeggios, I have videos on both major seven arpeggios and the simple triads. I encourage you to go check those out. There's free diagrams to download on my website, link in the description there as well. But another cool way to practice this would be maybe to go up one shape and down the other. Then when I get 
get to F major, I would do the same thing, but I would now be playing the notes F, A, and C, or this F major triad, we get. And then I would get the arpeggio notes for G. G, B, and D. And again, I have diagrams for these available for free download on my website if you need a hand with these. But now I'll give you an idea of what that sounds like if I were to do just that arpeggio exercise in time. If I were to expand this to 7th arpeggios, which again, I'm just taking for my C major, I'd be playing the notes C, E, G, and B. Again, I have videos, diagrams explaining this shape on my website. But here what I'll do, I'll play it again just in normal triads the first time, and then on the second time through the chord progression, I will give you the major 7, on C and F, and I will give you the dominant seven on the G. So this is what that would sound like. Triads first, then the whole seventh chord. is a great way to kind of go through this. And again, you can do this with any chord progression. And then the next kind of step to this, once you've gotten comfortable with your arpeggios, is getting comfortable with mixing the arpeggios with the scales associated with those chords. So again, when I was playing C, for my melodic bits, A lot of that, well that was actually entirely arpeggios, I played C major 7, F major 7, and then G7. Um, and that's really part of this jazzy sound, is jazz is a very harmonically specific music. So when I'm using these arpeggios, I'm really, we would call it playing the changes. I'm really addressing the harmony with my note choice and the way that my melodies are, are composed. Is There's a lot of those arpeggio shapes in there. But the next kind of step to mastery of this is mixing this with these scales. So a great way that you can work on seeing how these shapes connect to your scales is for all of your arpeggios, find a correlating scale to play around it. So say for example, this C major 7, which looked like this. That shape correlates with this C major scale position, or C Ionian. This F major arpeggio, ah, sorry, F major 7 arpeggio, corresponds with the same scale shape, but if I start on F, I end up getting F Lydian. Then finally, G Mixolydian, this G dominant 7 arpeggio. Which again, if I start from G, it's the same shape. Ah, uh, sorry. I get G Mixolydian, which is a great mode for dominant chords. And so by using these scales and arpeggios, when I'm adding in notes from the scale, I'm still thinking of the arpeggio first, if that makes any sense. Um, jazz is again a very harmonically specific language, and there's no better way to be harmonically specific than by hitting those arpeggio tones. Um, this is a subject that I could definitely go into some more depth on, and I'd be happy to do so. So if you have any questions about this material or suggestions for a follow-up video on the subject, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. It truly helps me out more than you could know. I've got links down below if you want to support me in this channel on Patreon, if you want to check out my ebook or my video course on triads, if you want to get in touch with me regarding maybe taking some guitar lessons, I'd love to hear from you and links to that are all going to be found down in the description there. I got new videos coming out every week, so I'll wish you a wonderful day, and I hope you get to have some fun playing the guitar. Thanks.